and now uh, the floor is uh, to uh, Anton Kulaga and uh, after that somebody else I will present. Uh, so Anton Kulaga is spe speaking also with another person. So Anton Kulaga is a bioinformatician at the Computational Biology of Aging Group, University of Bucharest. Uh, Anton, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me. And uh, I'm also very happy that uh, in uh, this session, we briefly touched uh, uh, democratizing longevity for everyone, uh, starting with longevity protocol. And uh, my talk actually is also about uh, getting personal on uh, our longevity and uh, devoted to longevity genomics. Uh, so, uh, as I'm getting personal, I probably have to say a few words about uh, our team. So, uh, we have a distributed uh, team uh, uh, working in a remote fashion. So, uh, I will co-present with uh, Olga Borisova, who will uh, tell the second part of presentation. And uh, the way how it started was also uh, really personal for me. So it was me and uh, the white rabbit uh, on the left corner in the beginning. And uh, even though I am involved in uh, both academia and industry, where I am colleague of uh, Ioan Matei, uh, pre previous presenter, uh, actually, this project started with my uh, personal interest uh, because I am bioinformatician, I uh, felt like uh, I am a shoemaker um, without shoes because I uh, didn't analyze my uh, personal genome. And uh, I discovered that it's super cheap to do whole genome sequencing that I did like for $300 uh, with uh, Dante, and uh, I decided to analyze myself. So uh, started uh, from writing bioinformatic pipeline because uh, it was uh, the easiest thing to do. And of course I open sourced uh, everything. And uh, after that, uh, the white rabbit, Newton Winter anonymous uh, contributor joined me. Uh, we improved it to be better than Dante, so we added some deep learning based variant calling and some other tricks. And uh, what we faced it is that uh, we did three steps like uh, uh, assembling genome, uh, then writing code, and uh, uh, when we got already annotated genome, we discovered that the, there is a huge amount of ways how you can interpret those uh, several million variants that you get uh, after you after your pipeline worked and then uh, we got stuck busy with other stuff uh, until uh, uh, until uh, the gitcoin happened uh, so the gitcoin was uh, uh, a, an open source uh, uh, grant, grant round and we thought okay maybe we could uh, collect uh, several hundred um, dollars uh, or maybe a thousand to do a little bit more and uh, uh, we learned about it like two days before the deadline so uh, we didn't have time so we took a picture from uh, PyMall and just said okay let we let us be just DNA sequencing surprisingly, surprisingly we managed to collect 70,000 and build the team and um, uh, when we built a team, we decided, okay, what should we start with? And uh, actually, we decided to start from the very beginning and uh, looking what we should actually have done before we before we sequenced ourselves is uh, how heritable is uh, uh, longevity and other traits. And um, uh, we actually checked, and uh, it's. There are different estimates, but uh, it is from uh, uh, 10 to 30 percent based on different uh, methods. And there are two major methods. So you can assess it by uh, twin studies and you can also assess it by uh, genomics. And usually you have higher heritability by twin studies because our genomic models uh, are not super good, so they cannot explain uh, many heritable factors. 
And also we know that uh, super longevity is more heritable than uh, uh, longevity for most uh, of the people. Uh, also, some people uh, did different family studies. It, uh, it is somewhat similar to twin studies, but uh, larger population and uh, not twins. And uh, there were also some interesting findings that in some cases, like with Huntington diseases, uh, it's also um, a balance between uh, uh, different uh, repeats uh, that matters, not only like uh, absence or presence of uh, longevity genes. And uh, we also studied, okay, uh, we know the heritability, what uh, else useful can be done with it? Of course, uh, uh, we can uh, think about uh, our own personal risk, but we can also search for targets uh, for different gene therapies. And uh, the other thing is actually something that we are doing now. We uh, actually applying now for UK Biobank access to see if we can add genomic components to aging clocks uh, to actually improve their prediction, assuming that heritability, even though it's pretty small, uh, from like 10 to 30 percent, can improve the precision. And uh, with this preliminary research, we actually started uh, be building open source uh, modules uh, on top of uh, open source OAKVAR uh, platforms that, that uh, annotated our uh, risks uh, for uh, different diseases. And we made the major focus on uh, longevity that was missing in uh, proposals of Dante, Nebula, and different uh, commercial companies. And with this, I want to give uh, the word to my uh, co-presenter, Olga, who actually uh, worked a lot and did most of the works with uh, our reports. Yes, thank you, Anton. So we put our hopes for radical life extension on genetics, but let's move back to our platform and first of all we have to discover important longevity variants that we have in our own genome and the aim of our project actually is to give everyone the ability to discover these variants in own genomes so uh, our platform is called just dna sec and uh, it consists of OQR modules OQR is an open source genomic variant analysis platform bioinformatics pipelines and traditional libraries. So uh, how can you use it? Actually, it's very easy. Uh, all you have to do is have your genome sequenced and it uh, you can do it at any private lab. It's quite cheap, as Anton already mentioned. And then you can um, upload your VCF file into the platform and um, the good stuff in it is that you don't have to be a geneticist. So you don't have any more to choose annotators, filters, we have already done it for you. So after you're uploading your VCF file, you will receive a file with um, longevity report interpretation, and it concludes um, actually some submodules, longevity variants, longevity polygenic risk scores, longevity drugs, and age-related disease risks. And I will tell you a little bit more about them. And after receiving your report, you can just discover your longevity potential and use it uh, in, your day, in your daily life. Uh, so the first report in our platform is longevity variance report. And it is mainly based on longevity map. Uh, we have um, did a lot of stuff with it and we want to I'll give our great thanks to Joao Pedro for his kind help with his work with the database. Uh, and as well, it also contain other data sources. And actually now it is um, about almost 2000 variants, uh, which are scored and prioritized according to multiple criteria. So you can see in your report uh, weight of this uh, variant. Um, whether you're homozygous or heterozygous, your genotype, and you can, by double-clicking uh, this line, uh, see additional information about uh, pathways of longevity, where this um, SNP is involved, about uh, whether you can influence it, and by which ways, 
uh, and so on. Green one are positive, so pro-longevity, and the red one are kind of negative, anti-longevity. Uh, and so a little bit uh, wanna add that uh, while we were building our module and report, um, actually we did a lot of work with the database and we have updated longevity map. And uh, now we, uh, on a stage of building um, interface prototype on React, where we hope uh, to have um, an, a new version of longevity map. Uh, so what can you discover from your uh, longevity associated variants? First of all, none of us has perfect genes and um, there is some stuff from Anton's genome and I would say he kind of a lucky one. Uh, and uh, here you can see two important uh, genes, APOE. APOE is a gene which is strongly associated with longevity in multiple populations, and actually it still holds a leadership position in predicting like longevity-associated gene. And uh, you can uh, have positive allele like E2 or negative E4, and most of us have like intermediate E3. But uh, Anton has um, a very rare variant, E2, E4 variant. Uh, one is unfavorable, but another is favorable. And actually, the favorable, favorable one is very strong. And actually, it overwhelms the risks of unfavorable. So in that case, I wouldn't be too nervous and maybe just learn one more language and add some rosemary into food. Uh, to make some neuroprotection, but actually for people who hold both um, uh, unfavorable E4 variants, it's uh, a dangerous stuff because it's a strong prediction of um, neurodegeneration and uh, both the probability of development and severity. So you have to think about um, more serious stuff. And another gene, Anton also has a lot of positive SNPs uh, uh, changes in the FOXO3 gene. And it is identified as the second most replicated gene associated with extreme human longevity. Um, the mechanisms we still are discovering and don't know for sure, but most probably it maintains cardiovascular homeostasis. But despite several single genes, uh, it is crucial for longevity to estimate polygenic risk scores. Polygenic risk scores aggregate the effect of many common genetic variants to estimate a person's chances of gaining extreme longevity. Each variant of on its own tends little on the total outcome, but when added together, this difference can have a more significant impact, and various is calculated as a weighted sum of trade associated alleles. And it is represented as a percentile within a given population. For example, it's also from Anton's genome. If you have a 94th percentile, it means your genetic change, chances to gain extreme longevity is higher than 94 of every 100 people in a chosen population. And now our report is based on the existing longevity polygenic scores, which we take um, uh, from a base, but we just, um, and we implemented them, but soon we will be able to calculate our own scores. Uh, and uh, as Anton already uh, told, we have an access to UK Biobank and think about doing something like with it. And another important stuff, longevity, uh, longevity drugs. Actually, drug metabolism to a large extent depends on a person's genetic polymorphisms, uh, which affects um, the activity of xenobiotics transforming enzymes. So it's uh, a common situation when individual um, dose correction is needed or even another drug uh, has to be taken in order to avoid adverse effect. Um, for example, uh, aspirin, we use it like for antiplatelet option, uh, but it doesn't um, have this effect for everyone depending on gene variant and statins which are widely prescribed, they may lead to rhabdominolysis. It's breaking down of muscle cells. It's not that common, but anyway, it's better to avoid it when it's possible. And especially uh, pharmacogenetics is important when it comes to drugs you're taking on a, on a daily basis, like every day, like statins, metformin, antidepressants, and longevity drugs. And we hope there will be more and more of longevity drugs 
because now we work um, mainly with um, like commonly prescribed uh, cardiovascular drugs, anti-diabetic drugs, and uh, our report is based mainly on farm GKB database, and we also added manually some information um, uh, about uh, which uh, effects this drug uh, has for longevity and also personal risks as well. Uh, for example, for statins, if you uh, have a good response, you are highly responsible for statins, you may start with a lower dose and get advantages for a lower dose. So it's no need to increase your dosage and uh, which will increase uh, the risk of adverse effects as well. Um, as a genetic staff, actually we started with longevity variants, but it's not enough to have centenarian genes to become one and you have to cut down your health risks before. Um, and this section contains information about the risk of developing age-associated and chronic diseases like cardiovascular, cancer, mental health diseases, uh, your risk to develop high degree of uh, chronic inflammation, bone and muscle diseases and lung diseases. Uh, we have already implemented several uh, polygenic risk scores for diseases and here the situation is opposite. The higher score you have, the more uh, likely you have to develop some risks. So in that situation, it has good scores for coronary heart disease, so low probability to develop one, but should be attentive to blood clots. Uh, so uh, also we have implemented uh, some other polygenic risk scores for uh, atherosclerosis and the reactive protein measurement, it will go to the section of um, inflammation. Uh, and besides uh, polygenic risk scores, um, uh, we have um, also in built in these modules uh, lists with important SMPs for particular diseases. And cardiovascular report uh, is almost ready, and it consists of coronary, coronary artery disease risk, thrombophilia risk, rare hereditary uh, disease. Hereditary uh, diseases risk and atherosclerosis risk. We also have a cancer report, oncology risk report, and now we are working on osteoporosis module, mental health module, inflammation, and lung disease module. So, as you see, we have a lot of plans, and uh, our main task for now is to bring longevity research to daily people life and uh, increase the involvement in uh, the longevity community by making transparent and open platform for personal genomics. And uh, that's why our today's topic is longevity genetics for everyone. And thanks for listening. And if you have any questions, we would be happy to, um, to answer them. Thank you very much, uh, Olga. Thank you also, uh, Anton. Uh, we have time for one or two questions, but not more. Uh, I saw one question uh, in the chat. Uh, if you saw it already, I have to find it back. Uh, uh, it was a question from Philip van den Arvelt. Philip, if you are, uh, if you can say it uh, directly, uh, it's it's easier for me, <laughs> I would say. But otherwise, where did I? Or oh, somebody else can can read it. I don't find it back in at the moment. Uh, uh yeah yeah philip yes uh, i, yeah, I can read it. Yeah. Uh, when a person has yeah. both epoe4 genes uh, then what more serious preventive measures does this person need to take to reduce the high risk of cognitive decline yeah thanks for the question we're all hoping for gene therapy uh, but for now all we can do to precisely control our inflammation level a control insulin resistance because insulin resistance was shown, was shown to be highly correlated with um, Alzheimer and insulin resistance it's not just peripheral just like muscle etc but it also can occur in our brain and it leads to neuroinflammation and increases risks of Alzheimer so controlling inflammation level controlling like blood glucose level resistance to insulin like that stuff and we all hope that some 
some more radical drugs will come soon. Thank you, Olga. I see, uh, but I don't know the name, somebody uh, asking uh, to speak, uh, VSMKOF, <laughs> sorry. Ah, and yeah, and Philippe also. Okay, the, the first one who speaks, uh, and yeah. Didier, bonjour. Uh, bonjour, Didier, it's Vlad, Vladimir. Okay, go ahead, yeah, sorry. Um, Olga, uh, lovely presentation, um, a question. Um, what are the uh, public, are you taking your project outside to a larger public um, outside of the outside of the community and how are you going to do that? Uh, well, I think Anton will tell more about it. We have uh, all our, it's an open source project and we have all our pipelines um, on GitHub. And now we can advertising. So our project just in the longevity community at conferences, congresses, etc. Uh, and actually, we uh, I, I don't know how can we do it further, but we have some communication with Dante Lab. So uh, we have some preliminary agreement. So if uh, people, for example, don't have already uh, genome sequenced, they can send the material to Dante Lab and probably Dante Lab can, can somehow advise our report for longevity because they don't have their own longevity stuff. Sure. Uh, yeah, I can uh, add a few words. So in our case, um, yeah, we open source all the code and also everything is trackable in uh, a way that uh, unlike you have with many companies, you, here you actually know how this or that result was computed. So everybody can fork the code and extend it. Then uh, we also, uh, from time to time, we also make workshops. Uh, we, for example, we made uh, uh, Hack Your Own Genome workshop where we taught people how to analyze uh, your own genome because uh, all our platform that we build on top of it is actually has a proper interface for uh, manual genome investigation. So you get not only reports, but you have uh, tools uh, to actually manually, you have some variants of interest and you can manually investigate them. Our code is so far uh, published with a copyleft uh, license, but uh, for people who want to uh, collaborate with us uh, B2P, we can, uh, actually to a license it. So far, our policy is uh, to be open uh, for everybody for non-commercial purpose, but uh, those who want to uh, collaborate commercially, we can uh, uh, discuss it. So I understand and also that. feel okay. free to contact me uh, or Olga. We have over all our contacts uh, so you can know more. Sure. So if I understand you okay, want to then, basic, I'm sorry, Gigi. So, so if yeah, I understand. I, uh, yeah, I leave you. I leave you 30 seconds and then uh, we stop there. <laughs> no, no, oh, just, uh, yeah, so, sorry. Yeah. yeah. So you understand you, you want at some stage to basically make it kind of license for the labs, if I understand correctly, Anton. This is your dream scenario. Uh, not for the labs. I mean, if commercial companies, uh, actually, uh, we have some options. So far, we have funding, uh, Gitcoin funding until I believe uh, end of spring. And uh, right now we just develop out of this funding and uh, afterwards, uh, this is one of the options how we can collaborate. If there will be public grants or anything else, uh, we don't have like a concrete strategy that we just go uh, this model or not that model because our aim is to just make uh, things available because you can run stuff on your laptop you don't need to like uh, have any centralized authority to provide your analysis if you fork the code okay thank you anton thank you olga and uh, vladimir